Hello, it's Paul again. Uh, doing the tire for the Honda CT70. Yeah, so are you tired yet? Ah, uh, well, you soon will be. <laughs> are you? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> That's terrible. Okay. Uh, so we got this part of the wheel, if you saw the last video. Uh, and I decided I'll just do it in this video. I don't know exactly how it's hooked on the reverse, but I do know it overlaps the edge. So I'm just going to extend outward, like so. I'm just going to make some faces. I may have to fix this again because it's probably not entirely correct. I'll have to find more references. But for now, um, here it is. I'm just going to pick these faces and screw them outward a little bit and screw it again because I do know it overlaps on the one side but I'm not sure exactly how it overlaps so Individual origins. Yeah. Okay. Something like that, maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's wonky. I think I'll have to bring those uh, faces out somewhere and line them with that, but. I just know that there's like a thing that catches on the rim and then that's how they attach it. The middle centers itself too, it does go inside like that. Uh, keep in mind this is extruding on the individual origins and not outwards from the center. So that's why it's not fanning out. So I'm using this pivot mode here. Alright. Um, repeating stuff this time. Still if I avoided in the last video I'm doing in this one. <laughs> Where? Alright. Um. I'll just do one and then I can do the rest later. Set. I got specials menu, loop tools, circle, and I'm just going to scale it on the medium point pivot. So, I'll be copying that face over to match the bolt hole up. I might rearrange that anyways. It will have a hole there, but so you get the idea. Not hard. Uh, I don't need to mess with that anymore. So what I want to do next is the actual tire. So I have another file and I am going to append it because I was making the tread and tread is just kind of a process in itself. There are other videos on how to do this in Blender. but So I did copy a technique I saw somewhere else. Even I learned stuff from these things. Um, so I am going to go with the tread pattern here. And it's Ash, I believe. Right now it's just plain. And. The pen? I 
where did it append it? Oh, maybe you have to append it as an object. It's not showing up. That could be the case. Yeah, I'll do it that way. I'll file append. I'm probably gonna need some under it. I'll watch it show up like weird as this tiny thing hidden inside something else. Oh, no, I don't want to do it as a plane. Do it as an object. And just the plane, I guess. Oh, it showed up as the tire. Oh, weird. Does it have all the mods, modifiers on it? Uh. No, it came in with everything else, it looks like. Here's the tire. I still have to fix the tire though because it's obviously too big for one thing. <laughs> um, it's wheel rim. I'm gonna hide the wheel rim and hide the hub. Yeah, yeah, it has all the modifiers. Okay. So, I can turn off the smoothie. You can see it's a tire with this neat kind of dog bone pattern on it. And a little tread for going on pavement. And a dog bone for killing off road. And what else is there? Just a gnarly tread pattern. <laughs> but I didn't model it like this. And I still have to fix it. So that's why I'm going to show it's fixing it. It has a band modifier on it. And then it is an array, but I didn't model it like this either because if I turn off the array, it's just one section. And I didn't quite model it curved because I applied a curve object to it. So now it is modeled as a flat piece that is mirrored. That's, this is what I modeled to get that tire. But actually all I'm after right now is just this piece because um, if you notice when I had the tire showing visible, uh, click all these back on. There's a section missing and I guess somehow it doesn't know how to line these back up to themselves when it's uneven. So I have to uh, do something to make an even edge by cutting or whatever and modifying that mesh that this array and all that stuff is using and make that straight and then it should bring it up flush so that's what I'm going to be doing next so I can just knock all this stuff off of here and we need that because that. I gotta fix it and all these references, uh, probably don't need them either. So I can get rid of that. Yeah. And so using this empty for anything else? Probably not. Um, uh, I have the wheel room and all that. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to fix this tread section here. So this will be... Let's rename it tire for one thing. Well, this likely I will combine it with the wheel. So a tire and a wheel rim and the, the hub. Should be called wheel hub for now. Stuff, uh, some of the stuff like the wheel, the tire, and the hub. I think I'm going to combine them into one thing, but get them put together first in the right way and make sure they're good. But I don't see the hub anywhere. Uh, I'm worried about this tread section. Not really worried about it, but dealing with it. <laughs> I think you know what I mean. So, edit mode. Yeah, this is going to be a high density mesh compared to most things. It's just how it is. Uh, so first of all, I am going to duplicate it a time or two just so I have an even edge to go off of. And I 
have Rudex snapping. I have Rudex snapping on with active. I think I will want that. So I'm going to select this whole thing. Switch it to Vertex mode. I'm going to make that little Vertex there active. And I'm going to duplicate and snap to itself. So duplicate Y. Snap to itself. And it isn't meshing perfectly. Um, uh, yeah, that's kind of an issue. Uh, it's mesh perfectly anywhere. Not there. Because <laughs> look, there's overlap. That shouldn't be overlapping. Uh, Inside part. Okay, the inside part does mesh up. It's just this outer edge that needs to be fixed. So, what I can do is. Looks like both you need to scale to that vertex there, and then it should be good. So, I'm going to do that. Um, with circle select. See, this isn't really a tutorial, but you get to see workflow and an actual making of a thing, so it's kind of different than a usual tutorial. One. But it works along the same lines, you see how stuff gets done. I'm not really doing something with this model, I'm just. It's still kind of a hobby for me. <laughs> I made like pizza money on some 3D stuff, but. Everybody else is kind of into the game now, so now it's not as easy to sell stuff. I mean, you still can, but it's just like uh, so many people there get into it. Before, it used to stand out a lot easier. Now everybody and their cousin wants to do it, and then there's like no profit margin. You know, how do I explain it? Uh, yeah. But it's still fun. I'll give it that. Uh, like if you like puzzles and troubleshooting and crafting and making things, and so I want to do is scale this on Y scale on Y zero and she uh, active element because I did want it to reference to that vertex there, and it is active. So scale Y zero and regards to active element, and now the error flush. And I believe that corrected that one issue. Uh, so if I select this piece and I'm just gonna move it off a bit. Oops. There, that will do um G Y and just G. Be flush there now. Is there anything else that's off? I think there won't be anything off far enough to affect the remove doubles. So I'm going to want to combine this. Okay. Object mode. It looks okay. Uh, I'm going to add the subdivision and surface because if there's any holes or gaps, that will show it. You'll see like weird normal colors and stuff. Um, and it looks like it's okay. So if there's that. Alright. Now what I want to do is section this off in a way that will make sense and have a straight edge going all the way across. So 7 and orthographic. I don't need my reference image on, so I can turn that off. Alright. So, we want a section from that. We'll leave a straight edge. You know, like one of these blocks here on the outside, or maybe one of these lines in the perimeter. Um, I think, let me think. Straight edge here. Straight edge 
there. Are these lined up? Because if they are, that might be a place to do it. Uh, So I'm thinking of using a knife tool cutting across from two places that have straight edge going across. Straighten it up and I'll straighten this up. And I'll knife all the way across. That should give me a, a reference point, I think. So all these edges should be on the same point now. This. Okay. I'm going to try for it. Um, it's a knife tool, and right now it's free, and I want to turn on snapping. Yeah, it's going to make some new edges in weird places. Hopefully, it'll smooth okay. No guarantees. That one there. Now it'll give me a straight spot going all the way across there, and I guess I don't want it here. All the way across there. So what I'm going to do is edge split it. Control E edge split. Oh. Yay. You know, it didn't cut all the way across. It's one of the issues with edge split. Yeah. Mm. What I did is I forgot to turn on the cut through thing. Uh, back to that. All right. But it's one of the things you gotta watch out with for with the knife tool. So okay for knife tool. And top orthographic view. I want to go cut through, but I also want to hit Z to cut all the way through. So now, it's that one, and I'm going to hit E to start a fresh cut. And... All the way through right there. Now it should be all the way through, and... Control E edge split. Right. Now this should give me a segment that is repeatable and even. Alright. <laughs> Close enough. 
big artifacts when smoothing. Okay, I think this is acceptable. I mean, there's like one or two spots where triangles have made like a little bit of thing, but it's so small. I don't think it's going to be that big a deal. I mean, you gotta really get in like looking right at the spot right there on the tread to see it. From a normal distance, you're not going to see it. Especially when it gets curved and all that. So. So. Let's add the mirror modifier. And we want to profile like a tire. So now we're going to create a curve. This curve, which is what I did previously. I prefer the Beziers. You can use what you want, but I prefer these. I understand them. Um, so what you want to do is at the curve a. W to subdivide from the specialist menu. And I'm going to take all these. The two at the end, I'm going to flatten them by scaling them. Y, zero. This one up. Just bring them in line. For some reason, the curve, they want you to see that it's curved, so they always have it at this weird curvy shape. But you kind of have to adjust it to do something useful, so. Obviously, uh. So. Just manually adjust this until I get a tire profile. I think it's going to be a perfect thing. <laughs> so if you're looking for that, it's a place to do it. Uh, oh, how I see. Da, 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 da. So I'm trying to do is make the tire profile shape. Something like that. Does that look about right? So, these end handles, they don't really get used for anything. If you start a new point out, they will they will control the flow of the curve as the Bezier does, but uh on their own they're kinda without anything, they're just there. So you can scale them down and out of the way. You ain't gonna hurt anything. Uh let you know and so now we have a curve with the tire profile and this thing and I will likely have to adjust this so I already have the mirror modifier on be clipping but I can turn it on um, and it's set to merge on the center line so the next modifier is Uh, I can do the curve or the array, it doesn't matter which T 
two of these, order these two go into. So I could do. And let's name this to for now so it doesn't get confused. Because I might use the circle curve instead of the bend. Well, the bend works great too. Uh, either will actually work. <laughs> I've seen both, done both work. Um, yeah, there's always more than one way to do something. Curve tire profile. And kind of, but not quite. And so now it's inside out. And I also want to do bounce clamp and stretch, but it's inside out. So you can look at the curve. Edit mode and switch direction, maybe still inside out. Well, the idea is right, the rotation's <laughs> wrong. It's inside out, and what do we have the curve? We have the set to set to. Well, X is the right alignment, but it is going the wrong way. So, let's see, curve properties. Twisting and ones, yep. Almost, but no. Um, go back to minimal. Edit mode on the curve. Select all the points on the curve, hit Control T. And let's 180 that thing. Uh, side out. And now it's right side out like we'd want. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. So now we have following entire profile. And I am going to array it. So Where is it? Generate. Right. Of course, the array is going in the wrong direction. Oh, not what I want to do. I'm going to select it. So, merge and first list. Because it will come around to itself. And can increase the count now. Um, yeah. So now we got the tube profile of the tire, right? Like the tread pattern, which looks kind of cool. Well, I'm going to save this so I don't lose the work I've got so far. Uh, Dallas up to like somewhere between 20 and 40. And for simplicity's sake, I think the bend will work easier. But that I will need an empty. So empty, plain axis is fine. This empty bend control. I have to determine some things with the bend modifier. Like the axis it actually bends on. So, for all this modifier stick goodness down here, I am going to add another modifier for simple deform. Which is all swoop de whoop de off the edge there. Weird grip. That's not where we want it. Uh. So, bend control is the thing that controls it. Why? And... There. 
So now it is doing the bend in the right direction and just need to change it to 360. And there we got a tire. And I can still adjust that profile if I'm not sure if I like the, where the sidewalls are going and stuff. And yeah, it is coming a lot closer than it was. <laughs> I mean, it's practically back in on itself. Oh. a bit. So there is stuff to do with the aspect ratio. Uh, there's still a gap though so it's not perfectly flat. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> the other option is to use the circle in the other array. Um, I don't know why there's still this gap. So I thought it was straight. Three sixty. And a little bit over lips, so I'm not sure I'd care for it like that. Well, we could do the other method with the circle. <laughs> the same idea, but a different approach. I'm just getting this little hairline gap, and I don't know how to get rid of it. Uh -huh. Unless it has something to do with the array count. It is still there. perplexed. So all the other sections automatically merge. I think I'll go with the array method because it will generally attempt to merge stuff. And you see a little bit of tearing here too, I think. Head scratcher. Alright. Oh, we'll get rid of this thing. Could be a tiny here offset from the center, maybe doing it. Element. 
screwed screw with offset. And haven't tried a bad. <laughs> that could have been it right there, that little tiny hair of not being exactly in the center. Try bend again, and if that doesn't solve it, then it's all weird. Which means I need the X's again. I know it's quite, it's quite, that's all right, and... Okay, let's see if that solves the gap problem. Uh, 360. Yep, it's still there. Okay, so that wasn't it. It's just not cooperating. Okay. But I have seen this technique work to a uh, satisfactory effect in another example, but. It's just off by a tiny little bit. It's annoying to me, so... Next approach is to add... Curve Circle. And then... It's already curved object. We'll get another curve modifier. Which is the circle. But it is overlapping. So now we gotta go to the Bezier circle curve properties. And bounce clamp and stretch. That yeah, two is the tire shape. And I think the gap is gone. Yeti. Alright. See. It's more than one way to do it, and sometimes that comes in handy. Where is it? Oh, it just moved to a different spot. Oh. Stack order? Could have been that simple. Okay, that might have been just that simple as the stack order, but uh, cause it looks like that little tiny hairline gap is gone now. Yay! And be sure it is gone, I'm going to throw on the smoothie or subdivision surface actually. So. And this, all this will give us our tire. So, this is the circle and the profile. And I'm thinking I'm moving all this onto another layer in the file, the project 
Oh. So all of that. Tire to tire profile in the Bezier Circle. We're going to move to a new home on a different layer. Why is that? Because I am going to duplicate this tire. And on the duplicate, I am going to apply everything except the subdivision. to move the duplicate back to the original layer and that way if we want to change up the tire or adjust it we'll have all the stuff here and but here we will uh, well I don't need to mention wrap up and now we can just fit the tire onto this thing right <laughs> I think it will look plausible though. Let's get it sit on the bead. So So are you tired yet? <laughs> I'm terrible. <laughs> So now we have this kind of cool looking tire in here. It is admittedly poly heavy and more so with the subdivision on it. But it, there is the gap. The gap is still there. So there is the gap. It just moved to another spot again apparently. Uh, why is there a... Switch to local view, zoom back to that selection, and I think I'll just have to manually stitch these together. So what I'm going to do is turn that on this little thing here, and I'm going to change this to closest, and I'm going to go to vertex mode, and Clipping might be an issue with this kind of stuff. I don't think it's too bad. That's why it's disappearing in the corner there. That's the clipping setting. Uh, manually clean up that thing. Thought I had it licked. Apparently not. Make sure you're snapping to the right vertex T. It could snap to any of those other ones here. Oh, can I hide back facing? Back face color. That might help a bit. I don't know. No, it's because the vertices still show. It doesn't cold the back face. Okay. They do is hide half of it. Um, I 
I gotta find the Gepkin. <laughs> You're all it. Where's But it's noticeable. Uh, I guess this is it. Yeah. Doing as well, isn't it? Back together in that one spot. But slowly, not the fine instantly. <laughs> Alright. If the modifiers will do the work for you, that's a lot easier. Just what it's hoping for. Clipping is almost annoying, though. Know? You have to adjust it setting. Get smaller. Just so I can get in close. did everywhere else on it except for the one little spot at the end. Just that much tolerance. I guess uh, it doesn't calculate pi to the smallest decimal or something. But just enough to be causing things like this. It has to do with how many digits it handles. I think it only handles like 16 digits or something internally. Any more than that, they get truncated off on one side of the decimal point or other. Uh, it's like a clipping or like this kind of thing. Where you Zero one, so I can get in here tighter. That's better for what I'm doing. Oh wow, this off by a bit in some of these places. <laughs> Look at that! It's like all sheared over. I know this would be boring to watch, so I might finish this part later. Uh, and hide the rest, though. But you get the idea what's involved in stitching all that up. It's going to be a bit of a drag, so. I will finish that part on my own, but let's do something a little bit more fun. I think I have the materials on it. So I am in cycles mode. So, wheel tire, oh, wheel tire. I guess I did carry, this is a, uh, 
shader I came up with. It has diffuse and isotropic and a little touch of glossy. And this is the tire shader for this. So I guess the shader came with the, the object from the other file. Which is alright. Okay. Now it's going to play around with it, but I already have it set. But you can do the rendered preview. Yes, this is the top side. Yeah. So now it looks like that, and it does have the rubbery tire material. So that is one tire for a little Honda mini bike, your little pet bike. Uh, <laughs> Think that'll be cool on Sketchfab. Will I be able to get in there? Probably got to it with this kind of thing. Well, some of the other parts will be less detailed. But it does look like a tire, right? Yeah. Can also do, what's the other one? The mat cap. Mat cap renders a lot faster, so. It will show you your errors and your surfaces as well. Some funkiness there, but uh, I'm sure it's causing it. I guess this is how tight the edge is right here. Alright, so now you got a tire on there. Uh, nothing too fancy. And if you don't like the tire, you can adjust it or change it. And I have the setup menu to generate the tire on the other layer. Put the layer that will render is just this one here. And I still gotta put the little bolts under to hide the holes I put in. <laughs> I'm not gonna model the threads and the bolts, so that's crazy. But I'll just do the little heads over those. But it could come apart if somebody wanted it to. And I'll have the stuff there for that amount. Alright, I'm gonna wrap it up. That'll be it for now. But. You can see I have the tire under. That's it for now. Later.